One day, we're going to get a full card on Poke Doku, and people are going to lose their mind. Um, but I don't know if that day is going to be today, okay? Because what the heck is Gal... No, I know Galar! Galar is... The... It's the London version, where, like, the coughing has a, uh, like, a, a, a top hat on. Coughing is a smokestack. Deepest, bluest, my head is like a shark's fin. You know what I'm saying? Monotype Fire. Maybe you've heard of him. His name is Charmander. Monotype Ghost. Maybe you've heard of him. His name is Ghastly. <laughs> Monotype Steel. Maybe you've heard of him. His name is Agron. How can something be grass and fire type, bro? That's just not even possible. It's weak to itself. Okay, Galar. Galar. Galar was... Uh, I'm screwed. Monotype steel. It's easy. Steelix. How could it not be monotype steel? It's literally named steel. How about Reggie Steel? Reggie Steel! Now, Reggie Ghost? Reggie Ghost Ghost Wait, you can just do this Monotype Ghost Who would be the most ghost-like What the hell is Gimme Ghoul roaming It sounds like uh, the network you connect to When you go to a different country Gudra Hizui Stoutland Gumshoes Obstagoon Stonjourner. Rotom Frost. B Buddy is literally just an ice box. Are you kidding me? Now, I'm, I just don't think I'm going to get a grass ghost or a grass steel or a grass fire or anything from the Galar region. I can't believe I thought I was going to get a perfect card today. Monotype ghost should be easy, though. Chandler. I'm gonna guess maybe there's some fire involved there. It's hard. Are, don't spoil this for me, chat, but are there really only three ghost types in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow? Whenever I see ghost, all I can think of is Ghastly Haunter Gengar. Who else could there be? Drowsy Hypno, those are psychic. Kabuto, he's a fossil, he's not a ghost type. Who the heck is the... Are there other ghost types? I don't have an answer for you. Ghost grass? Spooky Bulbasaur isn't real. He can't hurt you. Three more guesses. Galar ghost. Okay, this is where we use Pokemon Go logic. Galarian... <laughs> Wait, you can't just type in Galarian? And what did they... Like, I don't understand how it's okay for them to put Darmanitan in here, but if I type in Galarian, it's considered cheating? Do they have it like that's, that's considered cheating? That hardly seems fair. Type Galar, not Galarian. Galar. No, oh, I think they, they saw through our tactic on that one. What the hell is Gengar Gamax, bro? This looks like a mini golf course. Okay. Well, you know, wait, 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 wait. Isn't this the one that introduced the G Maxes? Nope. <laughs> nope. Um, grass, steel, X, X. You know this guy? You know the guy I'm talking about? X X Can I get some help on this one, Chad? Axel? Axu, this is the guy I don't know if he's grass steel, but oh. <laughs> Come on, man. Really? 
He's green and has some metal. That's got to be like grass steel. And then grass ghost is just crazy. Grass fire is insane. I, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I got nothing here. I can't believe they, they won't let me use Galarian. I'm going to say it's Pikachu. Now, let's be realistic. Could we... you got to figure out which of these could I have gotten. Because some of them I, I could not get. And that's fair. But some of them I could have gotten. So I got this, and I got this. There's no shot I'm getting Gravard or Ogre Pond Hearth Flame Mask. What is this, man? I don't think I could have gotten any of these. Now, that being said, I do have 15 Kartanas, but like simultaneously, I never know what it... That's the one you just do the raid, and then like after the raid, I'm like, I'm never going to see this origami guy in my life. They're all real? I know they're real. I'm just like, they're not real to me. <laughs> it's probably the best grass type you own. Bro, don't be ridiculous. The best grass type I own? Hang on, it's been a while. I'm booting it up right now. There's no, no, it's not Venusaur. Don't insult me. I may be an original 151 guy, a Gen 1-er. But at the same time, I recognize that all of those Pokemon are uh, bad for Pokemon Go. I am booting up Pokemon Go. I will tell you my best grass Pokemon, okay? It's been so long, they're like, would you like to sync it with your Google account? Yes, I would. Sure, go ahead, Niantic. Read my emails. You already know like my exact location at all times anyway. Roserade, yeah, Roserade is, that's my best uh, DPS, man, my best grass DPS. So I'm searching grass, it's Roserade, and then like nine Kartanas, and then Brillum, Brellum. Anyway, so we've established one thing is that I don't know Pokemon that well. That's such a Johto take. You're so skibbity, you probably think this Galar is about you. Framed, the daily movie guessing game. This is Bram Stoker's Dracula. This is Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. This Harley Brothers, Harley Brothers, it's got a certain Jumanji-esque vibe to it, wouldn't you say? Hey! There's something about Movies you see when you're a kid, they stick in your brain, man. Like me watching the rest of Home Alone when I was sick on Saturday. When Macaulay Culkin unfurls his battle plan and it's like it's got the blueprints for the house and it's written like in crayon at the top of it. Like that image, I hadn't seen that image in like 27 years. But it instantly like hit a part of my brain that... Still stored it. It was like, I've been holding this for you. He is a psycho in Home Alone 2. He's crazy in Home Alone 2. Home Alone 2 is messed up. Dude, by the way, in Home Alone 1, he didn't do anything wrong to get left home alone. In Home Alone 2, 
he, he wasn't left home alone. He abandoned his family. He got on the wrong airplane. And then when he got to the airport, he said, excuse me, ma'am, where am I? And she said, New York. The dude could have been like, hey, can I get a ticket to like fly to home to see my parents or like to Miami or something like that? Like surely they would have just spotted him the money. It was the 90s. Nowadays, they probably would have just killed him. But like instead he says, let's go. And he's got like a recording of his dad uh, like with his credit card number and stuff. Oh, no, he has his dad's wallet. That's right. So he just takes a limo into the city and then like defrauds a hotel. He's probably staying in a suite that costs like $1,500 a night in 1992. Like credit card, you got it. My brain must be off its hinges because I believe you. That's why I'm going to let you go. I'm going to give you till the count of three to get your no good lying four flush took us out of here before I fill you full of lead. I don't know why those moments are always like the funniest part of all the Home Alone movies. I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> and a happy new year. Anyway, Jumanji. It's a fun movie, Jumanji. Factal! Does Factal work today? Frank, <laughs> these NFL players. Wait, no, give me regular Factal, please. Cities with the most annual sunshine. DL Guiga be like number one with the bullet, Chicago, no doubt. Angels with even filthier souls. As a kid, those movies obviously seemed like they were from like the 1950s. As an adult, I'm like the dedication to make the fake 1950s movie just for a bit in a kid's movie that none of the other, like none of the kids watching would understand at all, but all the parents would love is very good. Okay, now let's think about this. Cities with the most annual sunshine... Um, it, these should be cities that are close to the equator, I think. Now, most sunshine should correlate with heat, but it may not be a one-to-one -one correlation. I think you got to start and you got to say Quito, Ecuador goes number one. It's the most equatorial city I can think of. And then... Wouldn't surprise me if something in Egypt is here. Cape Town seems too far south. Wait, but then I'm... Th isn't this the way that it works? Okay, just hear me out here, chat. Because I live in Vancouver. Vancouver, relative to most Canadian population centers, don't concern yourself with the vast north that we have. I'm far from the equator relative to most Canadian population centers. In the summertime... We get tons of, the, our days are really long, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So is it like the further, oh, but then I'm like, maybe our days are shorter in the winter time because we tilt, because of the tilt. I'm not saying Vancouver's going to be up here. I'm just saying like, wouldn't, I guess it balances out. It should even out. The equator gets the sun all year. But like, don't equator... Mm, I guess it depends whether it's the summer or the winter. <laughs> Everywhere gets the same daylight? That can't be true. You're telling me if you took Quito, Ecuador versus Svalbard, Norway, annually they get the same amount of sun... Well, the same amount of daylight? Because Svalbard gets like endless days in the summer but no days in the winter on a daily basis no but on an annual basis really it sounds right I know that's why I'm skeptical anyway cities with the most annual sunshine 
You think that this is not asking about light. You think that this is asking about... <laughs> See, this is, a, this is a fucking confusing question. It's asking what, according to the weather network, which city has the, the least days of rain. They're not actually counting like the photons that land on the earth. That's confusing, bro. No adults use the word sunshine unless they're talking about Danny Boyle's third best movie, okay? Well, okay, in that case, when I think of, of days of, of cities that get a lot of sunshine, I think of like cities that don't get a lot of rain, which has me thinking of the desert, which has me thinking of Las Vegas. There's going to be a North American bias on our first one here, okay? It has me thinking of Phoenix. Yuma, not a city, sorry. El Paso. I don't want to offend my El Paso viewers. I'm going to say Casablanca, Morocco. And I'm going to throw in a um, Marsa Alam, Egypt on this one and then send it. Phoenix and Marsa Alam are up there. Okay. Let me get a... I feel like Cape Town is too close to the coast to not get precipitation. Indonesia strikes me as they get monsoons. So that should count them out. Now, Namibia... I don't know a lot about. So you got me thinking on this one. We'll add Namibia. Give me Tucson. Chile. Not yet. Toss me a... What, what did not end up on... Las Vegas didn't end up on here. I think we have to throw in all of the Arizona guesses just because the first Arizona guess was right. We throw in the other Egypt guess. And then give me the other Egypt guess. Launch it. We now know four of them, okay? Phoenix, Yuma, Marza Alam, Dakla Oasis. I think we're going to get it. El Paso. It's not going to be Tokyo, I'll tell you that much. El Paso. I feel like Rio de Janeiro, again, is on the beach. As a result, it will get some precipitation. I don't really, I'm not a weather scientist. I feel like when you're close to water, you get rained on now and then. Kalama. You strike, Colombia strikes me as like a rainforest. Kind of. A jungle. You can't get lush vegetation like that if you don't have precipitation. Like I'm talking, we're, we're talking about cactuses. Just cactuses. So Tulum, I don't know where that is, but we're going to try it. I know it's in Mexico. I don't know where in Mexico, but it could be, it could be cactuses. It's not going to be Naples. I don't think it's going to be Jakarta. Miami's too close to the water. I don't think it's going to be Buenos Aires. I don't think it's going to be Sydney, Australia. In that case, give me a, give me a Colombia and the Caracas because those are out of my weight class. I don't know what I'm dealing with here. All right, we got all five. I, this would not have been my first assumptions. Let's go. Kalama. Marsa Alam. Phoenix. Yuma. Dakla Oasis. Let's go. Oh, I only get one more crack at the wheelhouse here. <laughs> Let's go. Phoenix. I'm going to be pissed if Dakla Oasis is number one. Like, it's named after water. I'm going to go Phoenix. No. You know what? Phoenix has too many people. I'm going to go Yuma. Marza Alam. Dakla Oasis. Phoenix. Kalama Chili. I think I'm wrong. Ah! 
<laughs> really? That burns, bro. Off by fucking 55 hours of sunshine. It fucking kills, bro. It's a tough one. I mean, it's not going to be as tough as the next one, though, because the next one is Factal Sports. Rank these NFL players by the most rushing yards of all time in the Super Bowl. No, you know what? I'm not going to do I'm going to explain to you why I'm not going to do this. I thought maybe this would be from, you know, people whose names I recognize. But looking at these names, I'm sorry, but like, I don't know who 98% of these people are. I would just be picking names for fun. Rocky Blair? Like, what is that? Super Bowl II? Tony Dorsett? Like, yeah, sure, I know Marshawn Lynch. I know Terrell Davis. I know Emmett Smith. Lagarette Blunt? <laughs> Tungsten Arm O'Doyle? I'm sorry, I don't know this. It's just too much. No sports on that one today. Ah, but the Daily Dozen. Oh, I do like some Daily Dozen. Look him up? No, I don't think so. I don't think I will. NFL. The decision to start Doug Flutie or Rob Johnson was an ongoing storyline for the Buffalo Bills. I know this because Doug Flutie played in the Canadian Football League. So when he went to the NFL, it was like a big story. And everyone was like, bro, just start Flutie. He's on the Wheaties box, bro. Start Flutie. A top 10 pick out of Duke. This small forward made two all-star teams while playing for the Bulls from 2004 to 2014. That's a gimme. This is, what's that guy's name? The short kid who's eight inches taller than me who makes all the free throws. You know, you know his name. What's his name? JJ Redick? Is it J.J. Reddick? Nope. Okay, it's not J.J. Reddick, but that was who I was thinking of. That is, in its own way, that's like half points for me because I was able to think of a college basketball player who played for Duke. Nickname the Flying Tomato. Ah, oh, that's Sean White, bro. Come on. Don't embarrass yourself. What is the most... Excuse me? <laughs> How about we don't? <laughs> Why, do, where are we at with machine learning? That it's like... What's the most populated city in the United States? And it's like, hey, do you want to enter your passwords here? No, I don't want to enter my... I thought the AI was supposed to save us work, bro. What's the most populated city in the United States that begins with the letter E? Gimme? It's El Paso. We literally just had it in Factal. If, I didn't, if that was in front of mind, I never would have gotten that. I would have said like East Lansing. Celebrity mashup. This is Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Jake Gyllenhaal. It's Joseph Gordon-Levitt's face and Jake Gyllenhaal's hair. That's a gimme. With a red and white color scheme, this burger chain has a simplified menu, calling its double patty option the hamburger and the single patty option the little hamburger. <laughs> Red and white color scheme? Friendlies. That stings. Five guys! Oh, that makes way more sense. The fuck is Friendlies? One of those American uh, restaurants I always see advertisements for but have never been to. California by Phantom Planet was the theme song to The O.C., don't his brother, brother, where's the OC? The, there we go, the OC. Grossing over 200 million worldwide, this 2011 period drama and Best Picture nominee saw Viola Davis, Octavia Spencer, and Jessica Chastain earn Oscar nominations. What is Hidden Figures? It's the help! Oh. <laughs> 
Phil Collins took over as the lead vocalist? Bro, the questions are too easy or too hard. No, 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 we don't double dip on these. I'll, I'll take my two-piece tic-tac-toe victory. Average score, 4.8. What was the least got? Celebrity mashup. Bro, people are horrible at celebrity mashup. You're right, it is a three-piece. People are terrible at celebrity match, uh, mashup. Maybe you're just a freak. Well, that's well known, okay? You're weirdly good at it. You know what's crazy is that this is why you have to generate confidence from within. Anytime I did like, uh, who is this on Sporkle? People were like, you're face blind. And I'd have to tell them, no, I'm not. I'm actually really good with faces. They'd say, no, you're not. You didn't know that that was fucking Magnus Carlsen mixed with the Grinch or something like that. I'm like, yeah, it's because the human brain is like not meant for that. I had, to, I had to push back on that and not let people get into my head. I'm not face blind. I'm good with faces, bro. It's the damn screen region here. There we go. Your hair vision's out of control? I know. I guide others to a treasure I cannot possess. Hum, soda, gross, stick, stick of gum, mint. Mint is a kind of gum, gum. Scat, things you can do in a jazz song. Whistle, sounds you can make with your mouth. Scat, whistle, sing, hum. Carry a tune, it's that easy. Things that are sticky. Gum, tape, a stick, and glue. Imagine though, things that are sticky, <laughs> things that are sticky, <clears throat> some total gross counts, what are quantities, soda, lime, mint, rum, obviously this is right, but what is it, spear, Spear soda, lemon lime, lemon mint, soda, rum, types of candy, f candy flavors, mojito ingredients. That was a good one, though. Once we got things that are sticky with a stick in it, it was over. Rum flavored candy? Yeah, some of do. Back in the day in the 90s, you get like a rum flavored lifesaver or something like that. Didn't you hear, chat? I'm based for not knowing that's a mojito. It's actually illegal to order a mojito from a bartender because they take a long time to make. Yeah, 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 I know. Everybody that's a bartender is like, it's not illegal, just order one. They're fun to make. But people in the comments who have never been outside are like, I would never order a mojito from a bartender. And I would tip 200%. And I would never let my three-year-old approach a dog with its hand outstretched to try to get a, a scritch of its chin. Don't order it during a big rush. I say this not to cause a kerfuffle, but if you have a big rush at your bar slash restaurant, that sounds like your problem. I didn't advertise the happy hour special. I didn't build the establishment. I didn't deliberately understaff the place to get an extra 20% lining my pockets just because I own the building. That's a management issue. I'm not, listen, your mojito is going to take 20 minutes to come. Then you're never going to see me again. Okay. And that's fine. Cause I would only order a mojito on vacation, which means I'm probably not coming back to begin with, but you won't see me again. Let me put it that way. You did create excess demand? Bro, I'm, I'm a customer in your establishment. 
What do you mean I created excess demand? Me, when I go to the bar and have the audacity to order a drink that's on their menu, um, could you not please? What are you talking about? You know what you should do if, if there's a big rush at the bar and you can't have cocktails anymore? You should turn that negative into a positive. The, the head of bartending, the CBO, should be able to hit a button that makes like an alarm go off and it says for the next 25 minutes, it's beers only, but beers are 25% off. That should burn off a little excess demand. Nobody's making cocktails. You're slinging Miller High Life's. You know, you can serve like six of those a minute. Hey, Silly Rice Krispie, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. That's a great idea. I know. That's why it's probably like illegal. Most of the fun ideas for... Alcohol consumption are illegal because society has proven that they can't handle it. <laughs> they can only do stuff like that at like resorts in Mexico and stuff like that. In like Philadelphia, they can't do it. Please stop. Hearing so many people agree with you when they haven't worked service is driving me crazy. Listen, okay? You had 10, 15 years of everybody bending over backwards for the service staff. It's time for entitled customers to come back. You had it so good for so long. People were tipping a dollar on a $5 drink that takes two seconds to pour. Then you started to turn around the iPad and you're like, 25% mass service, 30% pretty good, 50% best service I've ever had. You've taken it too far. The, the, the whipsaw is coming back in the other direction. I'm not ordering any mojitos, okay? You don't have to worry about that. I would just say it would be nice if you took them off the menu if you're not allowed to order them. What's messed up? I'm the best customer you'll ever have. Well, I don't know. There was that guy who said, tell me what tip you want. And then the dude said, why don't you just give me what you think I deserve? And then when the, ser when the server walked away, he said, if he'd said a million dollars, I would have given him a million dollars. But instead he said, give me what you think I deserve. So I'm just going to give him a hundred bucks. That guy might be the best. <laughs> me, if I have to work as a server, I don't know, a million dollars. I get, I look at the receipt. They give me one dollar. Sorry, kid. I was going to give you a hundred bucks, but then you decided to be greedy. What the fuck? Come on, man. We got to trade customers. It's not fair. We support the bartenders. Sorry, I got a, a little burp. It's hard to tell if it's a norovirus burp or a Coke Zero burp. That's a Coke Zero burp. We go again. Quick photo. Pick. Subtraction word. Minus. Socrates taught him. Plato. Nikki Haley, Republican presidential candidate. What American customers do? Pay. <laughs> Rice dish. Pilaf. Totaling everything. In all. Adorable person. Cutie. What American customers do? Fly? Fly? American Airlines, how droll, the New York Times, how droll. Playing on the ambiguity of a proper noun, you've done it again, you so-and-sos. This is why we keep coming back. American customers. That was way shorter than a minute 25. Oh, I had it loaded up in the background while I was talking about mojitos for a while. <laughs> To be fair, Coscodo! What the dude? Cursed images. 
Holy. What is up with this? It Why does it look so wavy, bro? It's like... It looks like one of those, like, you know, when you see, like, a picture of the Earth, but they slice it so that it folds into a globe instead of folding into a cylinder? Like, it looks like that. Let me think about this. 15-ounce can of chili. Is that fluid ounces, or is... I, why am I talking like I'm, like, a nine-year-old kid from Princeton, New Jersey at a national spelling bee? Is that fluid ounces or ounces by weight? It's fluid ounces by it's 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 ounces by weight. Fifteen ounces by weight. Fifteen ounces by weight. Okay. Um, cattle drive gold. Can I ask you a question? Does the price end in a seven nine seven nine or nine nine? Can you use it in a sentence? We gotta get that there cattle drive beef chili with bean. We gotta get that there cattle drive chili with bean. Okay. Eight cans. It's a family pack. Fifteen ounces. I'm gonna assume one can. See, this is not in my area of expertise, so I got to think about it. I'm going to say a can is a dollar and 60 cents times eight takes this to roughly 12.99. Then I'm going to say it's Costco. So we're going to say 11.99. It's lower than that. I don't know what yellow lower means, but I don't think it's my, it'll take me to 10.99 then. <laughs> the dude knows groceries, man. What can you say? This shit ain't even in my locally denominated currency. I was going off on Apollo too. It got me laughing. Let me let me go find it here. I must have amnesia. I forgot that he's him. That's the thing. People assume I'm out of touch. I might be out of touch in my mojito discourse, but I'm not out of touch when it comes to grocery prices. I ain't ever used a grocery delivery service in my life. I'll tell you why. Because during COVID, everybody was using the grocery delivery services. And I was like, that seems amazing. Then I'm like, hey, I could use some groceries. I need them today. Earliest appointment, four days from now. Okay, you'll, you'll be seeing my masked ass at the grocery store then because you don't have the enough capacity in order to get me my delivered groceries when I actually need them. Okay, here we go. I said, Apollo. <clears throat> you ever play Costco? They show you a food and you guess how much it costs at Costco. He said, I don't shop at Costco. I'm only used to inflated Instacart prices. I said, come on, bro. Go ahead. Don't be cringe. Tell me how much four pounds of gala apples cost. I just wanted to hear his answer, man. I wanted to hear how much Apollo thought four pounds of apples cost. Because I think it could be the same sort of thing where he said, if you didn't say a huge number for this, you're stupid. And then... He said that the moon was 6,000 Earths away from Earth. <laughs> Apollo, if you're here, by the way, it's all laughs. I do want to tell you one time I was playing 1 versus 100 on Xbox Live. And um, I, the question was, what is the closest star to the Earth? And I said Alpha Centauri. Or I said like Beetlejuice or something like that. By the in case you're confused, the answer is the sun. The sun is the closest star to the earth. <laughs> Everybody, you know, we've all got blind spots in our knowledge. Groceries are not one for me, though. I'm at the you can catch me at that store three thrice weekly. April 18th, 2003. April 18th, 2003. I'm putting myself in the mindset I was in 10th grade. 10th grade. I was wearing a long sleeve shirt with a t-shirt on top of it and boot cut jeans. It's in the 10th grade. Sony Pictures 
in April, pre-memorial day, but still made a lot of money. It's not going to be Spider-Man. Maybe it is Spider-Man 2. Let me, let me see. Adam Sandler, probably not Spider-Man 2. Sony Pictures 2003, pre-anger management. Pre-longest yard. Maybe it is anger management now that I think about it. 2003, that's okay. It is anger management. Bad movie, by the way. Watch it again if you disagree. And if you still disagree after that, watch it again. Walt Disney, 16 million opening, 2003. What's crazy is this is kind of like the opening of uh, Wish in 2023. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? Hey, oh, or whatever. Uh, genre, adventure, family, drama, comedy. Tagline, some secrets are too big to be kept hidden. Starring Shia LaBeouf, it's holes. Okay, never seen it, but tagline plus actor sorts me out on that one. I was getting a little nervous. Warner Brothers opens to 12 milli. Starring Jamie Kennedy. This is Malibu's Most Wanted. That's a classic. If by classic you mean just absolutely horrible. <laughs> I watched um, about nine minutes of Kicking It Old School, by the way, which is a movie where uh, Jamie Kennedy... It's a lot... Very similar to this, by the way. Um, but... Jamie Kennedy is like a break dancer in the 80s, and then somehow he gets like frozen in time. He, 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 it goes into a coma, and then 20 years later, he gets thawed out, but he still talks like he's from the 80s. It may genuinely be one of the most racist films I've ever seen that is not racist, like to prove a point, like American History X. Like it's just like. It's just really, it, I don't think it's like a it didn't age well thing. I think it's like it never should have been made in the first place. <laughs> Somehow out of these three, the one you haven't seen is Holes. Bro, Anger Management across 100 milli domestic. Of course I've seen Anger Management. Now Malibu's Most Wanted, I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to say? I was 14 or 15 years old. I loved satire films, and uh, 8 Mile was like the biggest movie in history. This is like the, the scary movie to 8 Mile, but anyway. Tagline, ever feel like you don't belong? It's crazy Warner Brothers made that. MGM, in its first weekend, it grossed... 11, it grossed $8 million and then $3 million, I guess, in tips, which is nice. Starring Chow Yun Fat. It could only be Bulletproof Monk. Starring Chow Yun Fat and Sean William Scott, aka Stifler. <laughs> A mysterious and immortal Tibetan kung fu master who spent the last 60 years traveling around the world protecting the ancient scroll of the ultimate mentors a selfish street kid in the ancient intricacies of kung fu. All right. I told you I was in the 10th grade. It's all locked in my brain here. 20th Century Fox, third weekend, doing great in terms of holding over, much like the Paul Giamatti film, The Holdovers. Hey, by the way, I went through um, a crisis this weekend did you know Paul Giamatti was fucking 36 years old when he filmed Sideways? I saw it on Twitter and then I went to fact check it. I said, that seems wrong. That dude was not, they put some shit on him in that movie. <laughs> he was not 36 in that, he's going through a midlife crisis, man. I don't know what this... I'm not trying to insult Paul Giamatti. I'm just saying, like, that's not what 36-year-olds look like these days, man. I'm pretty sure Chris Evans is, like, 44. This dude... That means he played... Uh, 
Harvey Corman when he was like 32. That's younger than I am. <laughs> he was playing like a 60 year old man. They didn't live very long back then. Bitch, this was 2003. <laughs> it's, we're still living in those years. I mean, things have changed, but not really that much. Like, like Paul Giamatti's still here. Okay, 20th Century Fox, starring Colin Farrell. This is The Recruit with Al Pacino. Oh, it's not. 20th Century Fox, Colin Farrell, didn't crush at the box office. Like phone, well, we got lots of guests to burn. We should throw a phone booth in here just in case. Okay, it is phone booth. The only other thing I was thinking, holy fuck, we're in the 93rd percentile today. Oh! <laughs> Letterbox diamond users could never. Colin Farrell's easy. Because like in between 2002 and 2005, he was only in like five movies and all of them are known. The Recruits, Minority Report, Phone Booth, Daredevil, and I, I don't know, maybe one more thing that I can't remember now. Then he went away for like five years and then he was in In Bruges. Then he went away for another five years. And he came back and exclusively did Yorgos Lanthimos films. So if you see Colin Farrell as the top billed actor, it should narrow it down for you. If you have the year as well, you're in a great spot. You're giving out lessons now? <laughs> well, I'm in the 93rd percentile. So, yeah, I'm giving out, well, giving out, I don't know. You could always toss me a fiver. I don't know if I'd say I'm giving it out. Okay, I'm a little confused about this one. Milk Plus. <laughs> Is this Clockwork Orange? Ultra violence, Stanley Kubrick, Milk Plus. I guess I, anytime you see an image, they're always drinking the milk. Salieri, Rivalry, 18th century, Mozart. Yes, okay. Irish Civil War, Kenneth Branagh. This is um, Dublin. I mean, I'm just trying to... Oh, but this is The Flash. Okay. And we... Barry... Uh, Barry Lyndon! Barry Lyndon is the other one. Dude, that was so easy. Dublin. The Flash. Clockwork Orange. Amadeus. Barry Lyndon. The movie is not called Dublin. It's called Belfast. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I knew it was about Ireland. But I've never seen it. Because it does not have Loki in it. It's true. It's true. Give me the reversal. Loki, though, Rizzler. Listen, we're, you know what it's like? So I, I, again, I don't know if it was norovirus, but it was some kind of gastroenteritis I had on Saturday. I was half conscious the whole day. It was like having a, a, a horrible hangover plus a fever at the same time. And the only sentence that kept repeating through my brain was, you're so skibbity, you probably think this Riz is about you. It's just like what felt like 48 straight hours of, you're so skibbity, you probably think this Riz is about you. Like, you know, your brain just fixates on one sentence and you're like, stop it. And it's like, the more you tell it to stop it, the more it fixates on it. I was in purgatory, bro. Eurovision Song Contest, Rachel McAdams, 
Pierce Brosnan, Will Ferrell, movies about music, Tar, movies about music, Coco, movies about singing, singing, movies about singing, Spy Kids, movies about kids who are spies. Antonio, Band Antonio Banderas is in this and this. And, and probably some other thing. Wait, I see it. movies with X. Fast X, Project X, Saw X, American History X. Sicario, Dune. These are Denis Villeneuve movies. But none of the other ones are. Sicario, Josh Brolin is in Avengers Infinity War. That was a free swap. Do you see that? We got that Fast X in there for free. No Country for Old Men also has Josh Brolin. Antonio Banderas is in Shrek 2. Antonio Banderas is in Spy Kids. Antonio Banderas is in Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Josh Brolin, Skin I Live In, Eurovision Song Contest. Now we got to figure out this singing, music, musical performances. Antonio Banderas, Josh Brolin, 10th movie in the franchise, or just has an X in it. <laughs> Title X, yes. Okay. Now, Robert Rodriguez, Tar. Is that a Todd Phillips joint? You're not going to find much of that. Coco, Pixar, animated films. Animated films. Saw X, the 10th movie in the franchise. Movies about high school kids. Project X is a high school thing, right? Coco, movies about old people. The DEA, what I, the part of my problem here is I don't know what the skin I live in is. Mike Myers, Cameron Diaz. Temporarily stumped. Pierce Brosnan. Tommy Lee Jones, musical guest. Emily Blunt. Timothy Chalamet, Ed Norton. The bad guy rides a tricycle. Falls from Grace. Second movie. Netflix original. Netflix original. First movie. I can't fucking do it, man. Kate Blanchett. I, I gotta close my eyes. I, I'm just not seeing the board right. Let's refresh. D Gauss. D Gauss. Okay. What about movies that take place in Mexico? Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Coco, Sicario, Project X. American History X, Saw X, Saw, Saw 10 takes place in Mexico. <laughs> yes. The degaussing worked. Well, I think the first thing I saw when I degaussed was Once Upon a Time in Mexico. And I thought, you know what? What about Mexico? <laughs> Saw Diaz. That's the good Saw, right? Is there any other franchise where the 10th movie is considered maybe the best movie in the franchise? And please do not say The Lamb Before Time. One and 10 are the best ones. That's crazy, man. That's like Monkey Wrench by the Foo Fighters. One in 10. If you see in Saw, see one in 10. Da -na -na -da -na -na. Don't see any between them. That's not true. The 3D one is kind of fun at the very least. They're getting too fucking cooked with these ones, man. The Time Traveler's Wife to Child's Play. Now, this is rare for me. I know that's Rachel McAdams, but who is the... 
Is that Eric Bana? Can somebody with a more flexible neck than me tell me if that's Eric Bana? Correct. Now, the real problem is I don't know who the fuck's in Child's Play, but Eric Bana is in Funny People, which has every comedian of all time in it. So all we need to do is get to anybody who's ever been in a comedy from Child's Play. Aubrey Plaza, I think she's done some comedic work. So let's go Aubrey Plaza. We're just gonna, I mean, I think we can get this in just a couple. This is Elizabeth Olsen, but we, we can do better. Just give it a second. Dirty Grandpa, of course. But I'm trying to get the, 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 the connection is going to be funny people unless we can easily get to Jennifer Connelly. That movie looks like pure ass, bro. I guess this is before she was, she was still just Parks and Rec coded here. Who is that? Chris Evans, bro? What is this? This is the most photoshopped title I've ever seen or cover I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay, well, there's no way we can't get there from Monsters University, if we're being honest. Safety not guaranteed as Will Ferrell. Okay, here's our connection. Safety not guaranteed. This is the wrong movie. I got it confused with everything's for sale. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Now I'm down here with Basil Harris. Okay, I mean, lots of... You know, uh, Kristen Bell... Forgetting Sarah Marshall, Jonah Hill, Funny People. He must be in it. I didn't, I didn't remember him being in it, but he simply must. Eric Bana, Time Traveler's Wife. It's that simple. Short as possible. Eric Bana, Funny People. <laughs> She's in Funny People, man! She's in Funny People! I, I didn't need the connection. She is the connection. Well, I must have amnesia. I forgot that she's her. It's because you think women aren't funny? Excuse me. Funny people isn't funny. It's not Aubrey Plaza's fault. It's Judd Apatow's fault. Movie's too damn self-indulgent. It's like 18 hours long. It's like all about how comedians are like the modern philosophers of our time. Okay? That's entirely a Judd Apatow issue. I think the way we'll do movie grid and I'd say that's it. Then we can move on to the next game. Gary Oldman, Natalie Portman. Leon the Professional. Natalie... <laughs> 100%, huh? Natalie Portman, one word title. Closer. Natalie Portman released from 2000 to 2023. Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. <laughs> Every movie she's ever been in except Leon the Professional. True. Also true. Lily James. I don't really know who you are, Lily James. Um, I don't know who you are. If you and Lily Collins are like the same person or different people, Tom Hardy, Gary Oldman, give me The Dark Knight Rises, please. And then Tom Hardy, one word. Let me get Bronson. And then Tom Hardy, streamers getting ready for a charity boxing matches, be like, um, Tom Hardy released from 2000 to 2023. Let me get an inception here. Now, I have to figure out who Lily James is. So there's one Lily who is Phil Collins' daughter. I believe her name is Lily Collins. 
And then there's Lily James, who has brownish blonde hair and has been in eight movies I've never seen. I'm going to assume that Lily James is British and thus was in The Darkest Hour with Gary Oldman. <laughs> British spotted. Lily James, one word title. Lily James, considering I can't name a single one of her movies, this is going to be hard. I liked it better when I had Gary, Gary Oldman to kind of anchor me. Lily James was um, the, the, the Netflix romantic comedy that everyone went crazy for. The Do-Over? The Do-Over? Is that Lily James? No. Thanks for the feedback. Lily James, was she in Divergent? She was not. Show me the results. Can somebody tell me who Lily James is? You can click her name for a headshot. Honestly, I'm just being real with you. Seeing that she was in Baby Driver, I know that she played the waitress. But this image would not have given me enough to get anything, quite frankly. I wouldn't have gotten anything off of this. She was Cinderella in the Cinderella movie? No. That was Camilla Cabello, right? Are there two, Cinder two Cinderella remakes? There were two Cinderella remakes. Oh, she was in a Cinderella story. <laughs> the Kenneth Branagh one? What the hell? Anyway. I thought we did pretty... I mean, listen, everyone's like, you should have clicked on her name. I still wouldn't have known anything. The fact that we just pulled Darkest Hour out of the ether is kind of incredible. I'll take my points for that. By the way, hello, Josh. Hello. You Monday off, you motherfucker, you? Thanksgiving Monday? That's not a thing. Get back to work. I was sick of the whole internet being broken Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Get your damn IT professionals back to work and, 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 and stop pushing updates the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, okay? You're just asking for trouble. And Josh, can you take something up with your politicians? Did you see that video of the lady at Target and the price tag says it's $649 and then she slides a yellow price tag on top of it that says Black Friday special, $649? They really think we're stupid out there. Guy who will believe anything he sees on social media with no context. They really think we're stupid. That being said, can I say something? I support uh, Target's right to do that. Because if you're the kind of person who sees something they don't need, but buys it because it's 20% off, you deserve to pay the price that you were going to pay. It's P.T. Barnum. A sucker is born every minute. Hi, Tomo. It's illegal? Good. Then arrest them. Otherwise, enjoy your full-price Breville juicer. Tomo, I'm, I'm not an electrical guy, okay? Let me just slash marker this. 